Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jonathan Larson. He's with the University of Kentucky as extension entomologist there. So it's the cicada, and it's always kind of a mystery. It's like, when are they coming? Is it a big one? Is it a <laughs> short year? What, what's going on here? But this is a year, right? This is a year. 2025 is a big year for cicadas in the state of Kentucky. I will, I will be very specific about that. Last year in 2024, people heard about this big double brood emergence. It was all the talk of the bug world from like January until July. And that didn't really hit Kentucky very much, like very outer tip of the state in the purchase region, maybe like very, very tip of that. But this year we're seeing brood 14 come out, which is a specific group of these periodical cicadas. They are very centered here in Kentucky. So these are slightly different than the annual cicadas that people may be more familiar with uh, from later in the summer. The annual cicadas are big and green and black, and they come out usually in like July and August. These are gonna come out starting usually in May, right around the time that irises are in full bloom. Periodical cicadas do make a lot of noise. Cicadas are some of the few insects that use sort of auditory cues to find one another in the environment. So when cicadas are singing their song, that is a male cicada who's trying to recruit either other males to his tree because he's like, this is the best tree, dudes. <laughs> we can start a band once here. All his friends to come That's over right, them. exactly. Yeah. And then once they're all together, they sing in a big chorus that attracts the females to the tree. Then they pair off and sing courtship songs to the female. <laughs> uh, and then if she accepts, she'll click her wings at him. She can't actually sing. It's only the males that are able to make this tremendous noise. But yeah, that will happen again this year. <laughs> it is like clockwork, this 13 or 17 year pattern. So we have 13 year species and then 17 year species. This year is a 17 year species group. So there's gonna be three distinct species of cicada that will come out of the ground, uh, but they all do this 17 year cycle. In terms of why they do that, it has a lot to do with uh, cut, cutting off specialization. So there's no animal that only eats periodical cicadas or only lays their eggs in them because that's not a very reliable food resource. Mm -hmm. Why it's these weird prime numbers, that's not something that we can fully explain, like why 13 and 17. Just suffice to say it seems to have worked for them for a very long time. Uh, but it does mean that they're below ground as a nymph feeding in the tree root zone on sap for all that time and they can log the passage of the sap, like when it's in abundance and when it's kind of gone, and then they keep track of that. They do mess up sometimes. They'll come out a year early. They can come out one to three years late. I always feel really bad for the three year late ones because they <laughs> must come out and look around and be like, what is going on? <laughs> they come out in these huge numbers by the millions, sometimes in certain groups by the billions, and then they get eaten a lot. <laughs> so lots of things will gorge themselves on cicadas during this initial wave but then they get sick of cicadas. They never want to see them again. It's like if we ate pizza for four days straight, it just starts to not appeal to them. So then those ones that come out later, they have a higher chance of being able to mate and make the next generation of cicadas. All right, and that's a question that we've had about the cicada brood this mm -hmm. year is that it attracts copperheads yes. and that we should be on the alert for copperheads. Is that true? It's, so there's some truth in it. So okay. I will say that there's some really cool work that's been done at Eastern Kentucky University if people want to look it up. That's all about how the cicadas are a food resource for copperheads. We do see, just like when you have a mast year of acorns, there can be benefits to a population of animals for a year or two years after. The same thing can happen with cicadas. This is this huge surge of protein. So things like copperheads do get benefits from it. I won't say that you're going to see millions of copperheads swarming the mm -hmm. state of Kentucky. So uh, there's lots of things that are gonna use these as a quick food resource. I don't think that people need to pay any more special heed to copperheads than they already do, but it is something to be aware of. What concerns do like homeowners, general public have? That's a great question. Uh, they do come out in large numbers, so there'll be holes in your lawn when they first emerge. You'll see this kind of like Swiss cheese holes, kind of the size of a pencil spread throughout the lawn, usually centered around trees. They like oak trees. Uh, Long-lived species like that tend to be preferred hosts. And then when they mate and the females are laying their eggs, if they find young oak trees or young fruit trees, or if you're somebody that owns a tree nursery, they can land on some of those types of plants. And as they lay their eggs, they cut a slit in the branches. They use the tender young branches. On a big mature tree, not a big issue. It'll grow right through it. But on a newly transplanted tree, that can be very stressful. So we do advertise that people can put netting around their tree from around the time that they first hear the cicadas until the about six weeks after that point. 
and then you can peel the netting off that's called cicada netting. It has a different gauge than bird netting. It excludes them from being able to lay their eggs there. I would start buying it uh, during <laughs> right now <laughs> uh, before it goes up in price online. But yeah, that can be very helpful in terms of preventing that damage. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.